The 2022 Apollo Air electric scooter just might be my favorite daily commuter of all time. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to use it around downtown Edmonton, Alberta and see if I could trade my 2022 BMW X3 M Sport for the 2022 Apollo Air. So ladies and gentlemen, let's see if the 2022 Apollo Air can replace my BMW X3 and completely reinvent the wheel. Let's get it! First of all, let's quickly go over some key specs of this scooter. It's got a 500 watt motor, 21 miles per hour for all my Canadians out there. That's 33.8 kilometers per hour. Legit, I've gone over 35 kilometers per hour on a flat road, so I think this is underestimating it and over delivering. It's got a 31 mile range, which is 50 kilometers, more than you would ever need for downtown city commuting five to seven hours fully charged from zero and only 38.5 pounds, which is one of the main reasons why I think this scooter is probably one of my favorites just for its portability to be able to lift it with one hand if you need to take it up and down stairwells. This thing is super lightweight compared to a lot of the high powered scooters out there. And I just find it super easy to bring around, throw in the trunk without needing to break your back because I'm 44 years old this year, okay? I sneezed wrong the other day and I I threw my back out for a week, so I need to be able to carry this scooter easily. It also comes standard equipped with the regen brake, which is awesome. And then of course, you can't forget about the best in class folding mechanism, comparing it now even to my Apollo Phantom, which at the time was a revolutionary folding mechanism. I really do prefer this folding mechanism to that. It's super easy, super sturdy. I rarely have to adjust it. And really with one hand, I can put this thing up and down. Let's talk about a few of the reasons why I absolutely love this scooter and why I think it is reinventing the wheel. The first reason is the price point. At this price point of 999 US dollars, 1299 Canadian dollars, you cannot beat this scooter. If we're talking about cost and reinventing the wheel, let's talk about the cost savings. For example, just for easy math, let's say you've got a $400 car payment, including insurance. That's a pretty decent car. Mine's a little bit more, but let's say it's $400. $100 uh, average for a car payment, including insurance. Then you've got conservatively, I would say $200 a month on gas, $100 on parking, that's $700 a month. Plus the maintenance, repairs, all of those other pieces you have to factor in. Let's call that $100 a month. Now you're looking at $800 a month total. That's probably above average of what people are paying monthly. So let's call it $600 a month all in. What is that a year times 12? My math sucks. That's $7,200 a year in savings. You could literally buy seven or eight of these scooters, have your entire family and friends ride on these things and make a scooter gang. Gang, gang, baby, gang, gang. <laughs> save yourself a ton of money and save yourself a ton of time. Of course, just like all of the Apollo scooters that I've ever tried, the ride is silky smooth. The build quality of this machine is second to none. With the tires and the shocks on the Apollo Air, it is very, very comfortable and smooth to ride. Another thing I wanna throw in there is just the overall look of the Apollo Air and really all of the Apollo line of scooters. All of the cables are tucked into the stem, super clean lines, and the word that comes to mind when I think of the Apollo Air and all of the Apollo scooters is truly refinement, and that's what I'm looking for. It's great to have the chunky power scooters and the beasts like that. Of course, there's a place for those things. I like the look and feel of the refined scooter. And that's just me. That's my personal preference. I think what you get is a perfect balance between the power, easeability of use, accessibility with the app, but that overall look and refinement of a beautiful piece of machinery that you get in the Apollo Air. One of my favorite videos to watch online from Apollo is Elwa, the head engineer, walking us through 
the behind the scenes of their process as they actually refine their scooters. So we get to see V1, V2, V3, all of these versions and the things that they're changing and improving along the way by not only testing themselves, but listening to us, listening to their audience. What is it that we want? What is it that our concerns are? What are we complaining about? What do we love? Let's build more on the things that we are saying that we love. Let's correct the things that are concerns. And I love that about their process and that Apollo is open to sharing that process because for me, it's just interesting to see that process behind the scenes of how they got from iteration to iteration to the final production line of the scooter. I love that stuff, I think it's dope. So to be able to see that with Apollo and the beautiful bald headed, bold Elwa, that is really an incredible piece and I love watching those videos online all the time. I'll just quickly go through some of the features that I love that are really becoming staples and standards on all of Apollo scooters. The first thing, it's super stupid and small, but it's the bell. I love the way this bell sounds. I love the way that it feels. It doesn't feel rinky dinky like the other bells I've bought from bike shops and stuff like that. It feels like a solid build and it's got the right tone and sound and loudness to it. I've literally gone through 12, maybe 15 different bells. The built-in bell that you get on the Apollo Air is absolutely fantastic. And I can't say enough <laughs> awesome things about this bell. The way that the screen is also integrated into the stem, I actually really like that because I've gone from all the different screen iterations with the Apollo Phantom, for example, and you don't really need much info on your screen when you're riding. So for me, for this thing to be seamlessly built into the stem, be super bright, and have all of the information that I need readily available on that screen. I like the way that it just sort of melts into the background of this stem and it isn't protruding. I think it looks super slick and I particularly like that about the Apollo Air. Moving down is this hook. I used this just the other day to carry, I had to pick up some mail. So I put them in a plastic bag and I hung it right on this hook. It stayed there. It was a perfect dual purpose, which I love. A dual purpose of this hook, which actually is the latch that connects down onto the scooter. You know, the Apollo Air in particular over the City Pro that I have at least, this latch works particularly well. I find on the City and the City Pro that when you pick it up and it's latched, it's perfectly fine. But the second that you put that down and you have gravity sort of pulling that stem down, it quite easily unlatches from the bottom of the scooter. So you have to hook it on again before you pick it up. For me, that's one of the things that could be improved on these scooters is this latching system, but particularly on the Apollo air, I find that it works well. It, will, it works well enough anyways that it doesn't become unlatched and isn't as inconvenient for me to load in and out of the car. Another thing that some of the other line of scooters have that the Apollo Air is missing are the signals. I don't often use them because most of the time I'm riding on bike paths, the occasional sidewalk. I mean, don't ride on sidewalks, kids. Really, don't ride on sidewalks. I think you should ride on the roads where you can trust the skill and competence of all the other drivers out there in the world. Because really, there's no stupid drivers out there. Everybody is very skillful, very considerate, um, mindful of other pedestrians, bikes, and electric scooters who are sharing the road with them. I've never really seen any terrible accidents of cars running electric scooters off of the road. So, you know, stay off of the sidewalks, guys. Stick to the roads. You're super safe there. I really never ride on sidewalks myself. Myself. Good news is they have just launched the upgrade for the Apollo Air. So you can change your handlebar system out. You get the signals that are on the handlebars on the ends of the handlebar grips, which are highly visible from any direction, from the front, from the side, from the back. Everybody on the road or on the path can see that you are signaling and I think that is a huge advancement. And for a couple hundred bucks to be able to do that upgrade on your Apollo Air is an absolute no brainer. I'm gonna order that right away. It's like you read my mind. So in summary, could you truly reinvent the wheel with the Apollo Air and replace your vehicle? Absolutely. You can get to places on an electric scooter way faster than you can sitting in traffic. The other thing, it's way more fun. Who the f 
wants to sit in traffic when you could be ripping on an electric scooter? Not only can you save money, save time, you can have way more fun doing it. Let me be absolutely real with you here. Did I trade my 2022 BMW X3 in Brooklyn Gray M Sport <laughs> with blacked out wheels for the Apollo Air? Absolutely not. But could you have enough power and range and speed for this to be your only commuter in an urban city setting? Absolutely. F Uber, f a car, save all of that money and buy yourself the Apollo Air. You will absolutely not regret it. It has more than enough power, range, speed, ease of use, connectability, accessibility with the app to be able to lock it and leave it. All of the features that you could possibly ever need in an electric scooter at this price point are in the Apollo Air. Highly, highly recommend. Go out there, get yourselves one of these scooters, have some fun, and be safe, y'all. Peace!